Good morning. My name's Nate. If you're new, welcome. Hey, did anybody get, uh, Nasreen, you, did you get healed in that ministry time there? Wow. Wow. Did you guys hear that? He, she came in going, I, I wonder if, the, the, if they're going to give a word of knowledge for me this morning, and it was for her. Which one was for you? Do you, you mind me asking? Wow. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. Come on. Bless the Lord. Oh, wow. Did anybody else get, get touched feeling better after prayer or anything after the ministry time? Virginia? Yeah. Amen. Yes. That is awesome. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, yeah. Tree, do you want to shout it out? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Jesus. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's a, it's a good, uh, your lower back too? Guys, it's not a coincidence, three lower backs. Lower backs are like headaches in the healing kingdom, right? Yeah. Think, things that we just go to, to, to pills for, which you, you're Tylenol or, or, it's not that that's bad. I'm just saying, it's just like, well, it's just kind of my lot. You know, usually, that's huge. Lower back, because the Lord's like, you don't need that. Amen. No. This is a good on-ramp to what we're talking about today, actually. God's good. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Let it stick. Hey, the, this morning, if you want to turn your Bibles to uh, Mark chapter 5, that's where we'll be. We're going to continue. Um, this is, this is a, a message in this alignment series that Pastor Glenn started um, a couple months ago. Um, called expectation. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And you guys know that the definition of expectation, this is just like the Webster's definition of expectation, is a strong or firm belief that something will happen. Say will happen. Will happen. Good. No one said might happen. That's good because that's not expectation. That's changing the definition. So expectation is a strong belief that something will happen or firm belief that something will happen. Okay, so as we talk about expectation, there's so many different, so many different contexts that this, this concept can fit into, right? Or what are we expecting for and why? It was like, what, what's the context today? Um, well, I'm actually going to start today um, by, by asking Darby to come up, and she's going to share a few testimonies with you, just fresh testimonies from the last few weeks of her own life. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback off of what she shares, um, and that'll tell you where we're going specifically with expectation today. Um, but definitely going to be jumping into the Word, uh, because that's the bet. if you were here a few weeks ago, that's where we need to start and finish. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but Darby, you want to just come up here and, yeah, hey, I want you guys to, this is Darby Shankel. She's from East Texas, which you'll know in about 10 seconds when she starts talking. And um, come over here in the middle. And I really want you to honor her for being here this morning because she, she actually was in Dallas this weekend at a prophetic dan dance class at Lifestyle Christianity University and was, had an opportunity to stay last night and go to Upper Room this morning and totally be blessed there. Um, yeah, I know. And, she, and I was like, hey, will you come share testimony? So she drove back late last night. And so that she could be here to share with you all this morning. So honor her. <laughs> I took a nap at Bucky's. I got here like 3.30, so that's fine. Um, okay, hey. So Nate just asked me to share some of the things um, that I've seen in my life in the past couple of weeks. Um, so I'm just going to start. <laughs> um, I teach third grade. It's my first year teaching. I teach in Pflugerville. And in the public school, there's a lot of things we're really not allowed to do, but I kind of do them anyway, like Jesus undercover. Um, but Jehovah sneaky. <laughs> and um, I've seen a lot of awesome fruit in my students, just in the way that they're thinking and the things that they say and questions that they ask me. Um, but it was really 
starting to weigh on my heart. I wanted to see like revival and I wanted to see change in my coworkers. Um, and so I was talking to the Lord about that specifically. And I had seen that, um, just, he'd showed me a picture of that before, before I even started teaching. And I was almost starting not to get discouraged, but almost just asking him, is this for now? Like, am I going to see this now? Or is this for another time? Um, and the very next day, because with coworkers it's hard, like I can't really go up to someone and just share freely or ask if I can pray for them. Um, so the very next day, a lady that never comes in my room came in my room and was asking me some questions, and she sat down to actually help me with something on the computer. And it was after school, um, and we were talking about work stuff, and then she just started sharing some personal things and sharing and sharing and sharing and apologize. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I'm so sorry, and just starts crying. And I got up and shut the door, and we got to talk a little bit, and you could tell she believed in a God, but she doesn't have a relationship. Um, and in the middle of this, she gets a phone call um, confirming a doctor's appointment she has for tomorrow to get, the, or the next day, to get an MRI because she's got chronic um, pain in her neck and back, and she doesn't know why. And it was almost like God just put it there for me to grab like she was just on the phone I was like okay got you um and so she got off the phone and I asked just if I could pray for her and there was no expectation in her and that's okay because if we have Jesus in us and we're expecting that's enough the person doesn't have to have that to receive it um so anyway we start with her neck and I pray for her neck for all the pain to be gone and most of the time when I pray for people and they're healed instantly they're like crying or laughing or like super excited and this lady I asked her to check it, and she's touching. I can't find it. <laughs> she's, like, looking for it. Like, she keeps touching her neck. She says she can't find it. And I ask if I can pray for her back, and she kind of dismisses it. Like, well, it's been that way for a long time. It's just whatever, da, da, da. I was like, let me pray anyway. So I prayed for her lower back, and she stands up, and the same thing. She just keeps moving and testing it, and it's like, I can't find it. And just kind of straight-faced. <laughs> um so I got to pray with her again, tell her how much Jesus loves her, and she left, and I'm on one end of the hall, and she was walking to the other, and I was just kind of peeked out the door, still praying as she's walking back, and she gets about halfway down the hall and starts, like, she looked kind of silly, honestly, but, like, <laughs> testing it out, and she turns around, and I'm like, is it still good? And she went, yes, like, thank you. Um, but her name's Janie, and something actually worked out. She's going to be in my room a lot more often, and we have, like, a really cool relationship now. Um, so I'm expecting and believing good things for Janie. Um, and then another one, we, I got to go to the sin. Woo -woo, it was amazing. <laughs> um, and I got to run with some lifestyle Christianity students. So we actually just kind of went around under the bleachers and were praying for people while there was all sorts of crazy things happening on the field. There were crazy things happening under the bleachers too. And, um, there was one guy specifically, his name was Trey. He was kind of leading our little group, and he would just pull people. Like, he'd see a cast, and he'd be like, hey, let's pray for you. And this one girl, she got healed. Glenn's got, or someone's got a video. But she had, a, she had her arm in a sling, and she's a Christian. Like, she's a believer. She had her arm in a sling. We asked if, she could pray, if we could pray for her. She couldn't move it above right here before we prayed. And then it got a little better, and my friend Kelly was like, take the sling off. And she took it off, and it was still, a, she still had a little pain. She said, it's in my armpit. Like, the pain was in her armpit, and she couldn't move it. And I was like, this is going to be weird. But I put my hand on her armpit, and we prayed one more time, and this girl starts swinging her arm around. She didn't need her sling anymore. She was, like, blown yeah, away. And then on. Grace propped her out, so she had a great day. Um, <laughs> For, for those of you that are over 40, that means Grace gave her a prophetic word. Oh, yeah. We've got slang. <laughs> um, and then the guy that I mentioned earlier, Trey, that was kind of leading our little group or whatever, we were standing and waiting, and he mentioned that he's 70% deaf. He's legally, he can't really hear. Like, his hearing's really bad. And he, his friends had realized that earlier today, and they had prayed for him, and nothing changed. And right then, it would have been easy for me to go, oh, well, they prayed. That's cool. Like, da-da-da. But God's given me, like, expectancy. That's what we're talking about. And so I just kind of looked at him, and he's like, do you want to pray for me? <laughs> I was like, yes, I do. And so he got his phone out. He's got this app with different frequencies. So he was showing me, like, can you hear this? Yes. Okay, well, I can't hear that. He was showing me what he couldn't hear. And so I just prayed for his ears, and he tried them out, and he could hear all the frequencies. <laughs> um, we Come have on. a testimony of that, too. Um, so those are in the past couple of weeks. Um, last night, I was at the prophetic dance training in the morning, and then I used to teach Color Guard in East Texas, and they were competing in Dallas um, last night. So I got to go be with them, and a lady, lady, 
she's like my age, but um, she, <laughs> she, um, she just, God makes it so easy sometimes. And if we're not expectant, if we don't believe that God's heart is to heal always, there's lots of opportunities for us to just kind of go, oh, yeah. So like, for instance, I'm with this group of way non-believers, like way. <laughs> um, and she's just asking around for Advil. Like she has a really bad headache. And I was like, on a scale from like one to 10, how bad is it? She said it was a six. And right then, like, like headaches, like, oh, everyone has headaches. It would have been so easy for me to to not. Um, but I kind of like went around and pulled her to the side and said, can I pray for your headache? And I've known her for a long time, but she's not known me in this capacity. <laughs> um, cause we grew up kind of, ra- it's random anyway. Um, but I just prayed for her headache and she said, like, she's probably never been to church. She's living with her boyfriend. She's in the world, like way in the world. And she was like, it's, it's better. And I said, is it still there at all? And she's like, yeah, a little bit. So we prayed one more time, and it went completely away. And she got tears in her eyes, and I just saw how much Jesus loved her. And it was a headache. And that was last night, praise the Lord. And then this morning, here's the flip side. This morning, I was driving here and saw a guy um, walking on the street, and he had a cane. And on the way here, I was praying for the Lord to give me compassion. (laughs) And so it was like as soon as I saw him, I pulled over. He, like, the whole side of his left body is paralyzed. His name was Jeff. Um, But, like... When we ask the Lord to, like, give us his eyes and his heart, it's not ever a, should I do this? Should I pull over and pray? Because Jesus always healed the sick. And it's not a question of, does God want to heal them right now? Is he trying to teach them a lesson? That's, that's baloney, okay? Because <laughs> Jesus said, <laughs> Jesus said he only does what he sees the Father do do and Jesus healed everyone he didn't say well Glenn you know you've got some things to learn I'll come back in two weeks he didn't do that he just healed everyone and he loved everyone anyway so I pulled over and talked to him a little bit and we prayed for I just was expecting that he was going to be walking after that we prayed a few times and I got to tell him that Jesus loved him and just ask him some stuff and nothing happened right then in the natural and that's okay that doesn't decrease my expectancy. Come that on. doesn't mean that that doesn't that's not labeled as a failure. Um, that doesn't mean that God doesn't love him enough. That doesn't mean that I didn't spend enough time with Jesus that morning. It doesn't mean any of that. It means that God's still good and that God always wants to heal. That's his heart. And I need to seek more of Jesus and we need to go after this thing and we need to keep stepping out. If you don't step out, look, people are sick and they're broken right now. They're going to stay that way if we don't step out. So if you step out and nothing happens right then, okay. You stepped out. Your faith increased. Your expectancy increased. I could keep going, but Nate said I had eight minutes. Um, But I love y'all. Yeah, go Jesus. Thank you, Darby. So what she said. (laughs) Darby will be the first one to tell you that, well, she knows what I mean by this, that she's not special. Do you understand? She's very, you're very special. You know that. But do you, you understand what I mean by that? This is not for Darby alone. This is not for pastors alone. This is not for evangelists alone. It's not Todd White and Bill Johnson and Michael Koulianos and Benny Hinn and all these guys that can heal the sick and no one else. It's for every, what did Jesus say? These signs will follow everyone who believes. Everyone. Jesus said, whoever believes in me will do the same works as I do and even greater because I go to the Father. All right. So I got kind of a, it's a quick exhortation for you. Um, did you guys know that the leading cause of anger and disappointment is unmet expectations? My dad taught me that when I was so little. Right? I get all mad, and he's like, you just have unmet expectations. I'm like, well, I didn't expect you to say that. You know, like, you know, it's just, it, it, but I learned really young that when you have an unmet expectation, if you're, if you're not ready for it, right, so to speak, that it's the, it can lead you real quick into anger and disappointment, okay? Um, I'm sure you can all relate or think of a time very recently, maybe even this morning when you had an unmet expectation, okay? What I've learned is that there's generally uh, two ways to handle unmet expectation, okay? The first way is that we can trust God, be really quick to forgive, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, we can love harder. We can walk In humility, we can live by faith. We can do what Darby just said. When we have an unmet expectation, it actually let it build on our expectation for the next time, right? See, that's a kingdom principle right there because it doesn't make sense in the natural. Or, number two, we can 
get disappointed and angry, or, you know, that's kind of the, the reaction. But really, we could eliminate or lower our expectations to protect ourselves from experiencing disappointment, okay? Uh, if we are afraid of the emotional reaction when we don't have a, a met expectation, one of the things that we will generally do because it's easier is to stop having expectation and to lower, or to, you either get rid of the expectation altogether, you actually lower it uh, to, where, to where you're not surprised anymore. I'm guilty of doing this all the time. I've, I've, I've done this, where in business, and I had a lot of people working for me, and, and we we had generally a really good crew. Uh, every once in a while, we'd get some guys in that just weren't that good. And just day after day after day, these guys, is one, I just think of a couple of specific people, God bless them, that just really disappointed me. And so I would find, I was like, wake up in the morning, it's easier, I just wake up, and I'm like, well, today they're going to fail. And then when they failed, I was like, I knew that was going to happen. I'm not mad. <laughs> and it was nice, you know, because I was like, ah, oh, takes the stress away. But you see, that didn't make them any better, nor did it make me any better. All it did was protect me from, from diving in and really trying to, to help them, okay? It's the same thing when we do when we have an unmet expectation or fear of an unmet expectation. If we lower our expectation, it really doesn't help anybody. It's a temporary fix for, for something that really needs to be um, conquered. So Mark chapter 5, real quick, I'm going to read you a story here, and then I'm going to make a point, hopefully. Mark uh, chapter 5, verse 21, it says, And Jesus had crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake. A large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. That's expectation right there. Do you know why the crowd was there? Because they had heard about Jesus. <laughs> he was trying to get away from the crowd. They just couldn't get away from him. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and he pleaded earnestly with him, My daughter's dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that, he, so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. That's expectation right there. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. That's expectation. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she got worse. When she heard about Jesus, verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. I'm going to stop right there, spoil the end of the story. She gets healed. But listen to this. This woman with the issue of blood, it was actually against Jewish law for her to be there in the crowd because she was unclean. She'd been unclean for 12 years. So she was actually, not, she was actually just bold and, and went, well, I don't care. What do I have to lose? What are they going to do, put me outside of the city? I'm there anyway. You know what I mean? So she had this sort of like, I got nothing to lose attitude, which is great. But here's, here, listen to this. The Bible says, I'm just going to read it. So you, the Bible says, when she heard about Jesus, now listen, she's unclean. So the chances that she's receiving a firsthand testimony like we just received this morning are very, very slim. Her testimonies are probably second and third hand at best, meaning if you go tell somebody what Darby just told you and they share it to someone else, that's how she was hearing it from that person. So this, this most likely, right, this is a safe inference based on the culture and what we know about uh, Jewish law is that she's received, that was enough. That was enough. A third-hand testimony, second-hand testimony at best, was enough for her to go, man, if I, because she thought, if I can just touch his clothes. But the, test, uh, the testimony, from what we know from Scripture, there wasn't a testimony of other people touching his clothes and getting healed. So that means just from what we know. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like the testimony was, hey, all you got to do is get close to him and touch his cloak and you get healed. The testimony was, look at this man who just comes and he, and he lays his hands on people and he, and he multiplies food and he, he just loves. Why does he love? He's this Jewish man. Nobody knows. He's humble. He's not, he's, he's not rich. Like, what? And she hears all these stories and she's like, surely I could be healed. And then she goes, she looks at the crowd and she goes, man, if I could just get in there and touch him. If I could just touch his clothes. Like, that's how much expectancy she had. Her, her hopes were so, so high. And listen to me, she had 
every reason in the world to have low expectations. You know why? Here's what the Word of God says. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Her expectations, she should have been afraid to go. Why? Because every time she goes to a healer, she walks away worse. So she just heard about a new healer. What should her automatic response have been based on her experience? He will make me worse and cost me all of my money that I don't have anymore because I already spent it. That should have been her response in the natural, but it wasn't. She had every reason in the world to have low expectations, yet her expectations shot through the roof so much that she broke the Jewish law to get in there and touch him. And then when she got healed and Jesus turned around, she was ashamed that she was, she realized what had happened and she was crying and hiding her face. And Jesus was like, woman, your faith has made you well. Almost like Jesus saying like, yeah, I didn't do anything. That was you. That, that was just you and the father. That, like, because Jesus didn't even see her. I get excited about that. kind. Of, that's expectancy. She was like, she was like, all I got to do is touch him. And she had never seen him before. Come on. All right. You read through the Gospels, and you can't tell me that people weren't expectant when they heard Jesus. I just, this morning, Suzanne shared in her Sunday school class, which is really good, by the way. There's a plug. Oh, you're not Suzanne. Sorry. I'm Jesus. <laughs> Well, Rachel, it was really good, just so you know. But every time that Jesus went out in public, crowds gathered. They'd go to his house and wait for him when he's resting. They'd go to his house and just wait. <laughs> well, he's got to come out sometime. You know, they'd, they, they'd follow him when he'd get on his boat to get away. They, they're waiting on the shore, and he goes away. They run around, right? He's taking the shortcut. They run around on land to meet him at the other side. That is expectancy. See, the, and oh, my goodness. They even interrupted him when he was mourning. Mark chapter 6, if you just turn your page. John the Baptist gets beheaded. You guys remember this? John the Baptist gets beheaded and word gets to Jesus in the morning that, John, that his cousin just got beheaded in this terrible, adulterous, perverted just thing that went on in Herod's palace. Jesus hears that, and he actually, the, the Bible says that, the Bible says that, um, it says something, uh, where is it here, on here, uh, let's see, the apostles gathered around Jesus, Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught, uh, no, that's not it, anyways, I don't have time to look for it, what happens is the word gets to Jesus, Jesus actually go, goes into the boat, and he goes, I got to get away, I got to mourn. And this crowd gathers and won't let him go. Guys, he just, he just found, I can't even finish. He just found out that his cousin got beheaded, and he goes to mourn. And thousands, it says 5,000 men, so a, a, a very conservative estimate, 15,000 people are there waiting for him. And they're hungry. And the disciples are like, Jesus, what do we do? They're hungry. And he, and he says, give them some food. You know, like, you do it. You feed them. You go do the miracle. He was teaching them too. And he's like, all we have is a boy's lunch. And he's like, bring it to me. And he touted, he gives thanks. Before it's multiplied, he gives thanks that it's going to be multiplied. And he feeds everybody. Man. And he does all that after being interrupted from mourning his cousin because he loved so much. I'm just going to tell you that expectancy paints a massive target on you for heaven to come and land. It, all of these people came expectant, and Jesus could not help but meet them right where they were at. He couldn't help. He could have very, very, very legally said, I'm mourning. I'll be with you tomorrow. That would have been fine, but he didn't. I love that. Heaven responds to expectations. Let me tell you this. If you're taking any notes today, if you're writing them down in your vault, just write, write this down. Your beliefs will always influence your expectations. 
Your beliefs will always influence your expectations, that whether or not you have them, what you're expecting, and the degree to which you're expecting. Your beliefs will always influence that. We must get our beliefs rooted in Jesus, rooted in biblical truth, so that our expectations can be properly influenced. Because your expectation is going to be influenced no matter what. Your, or your lack of expectation will be influenced by something. Most of the time, they're influenced by our experience or lack of experience. Okay? Well, I've prayed for healing for people for 10 times, and I haven't seen anyone healed. Therefore, I don't believe they're going to get healed anymore. But I can't say that because I'm charismatic. So I keep saying I believe it, and I keep praying, but I actually don't expect them to get better. So you, you, but you, you actually, you'll learn that about yourself in your prayer. When you listen to yourself pray, and you start giving the Lord outs and caveats, like, like, Lord, I just I thank you that you're going to heal Kyle. And even if you don't, Lord. No. But that exposes, that exposes my belief. Listen, when I read in the word of God that God is good, okay, if I read he's good, then I expect to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27. When I read and believe that I have power and authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons, because the word of God does say that, that I've been given power and authority to raise the dead, dead people, physically dead people. You guys understand? Power and authority to raise the dead, cast out demons, heal the sick. Then I expect to see the dead raised, and I expect to see the sick healed, and I expect to see demons cast out in the name of Jesus. John 14, 12. When I read and believe uh, that in God's presence there's fullness of joy, we just read that this morning, Psalm 16, then I expect to be more joyful than I ever have every time I encounter his presence. When I read and believe that I'm to eagerly desire spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 14, then I expect that when I meet those conditions of eagerly desiring the spiritual gifts, that the Holy Spirit's going to shower on me gifts for the betterment of the body of Christ to his glory, over and over and over, and I want them all. I eagerly, I want every gift. People are like, what spiritual gift do you have? I'm like, I don't know, but I want all of them. <laughs> I know which ones I've operated in before, but I want them all. Now, today, like, I want them all. <laughs> I had people come up to me at one time, they like, you should really desire, you should really start to try to desire prophecy. I'm like, why would I stop at prophecy? I want, it to, I want all of the gifts. Don't tell me I just get one. I want to be like a kid on Christmas, not an adult. <laughs> Whew, okay. And lastly, when I read that I'm supposed to pray from heaven toward earth and not the other way around, okay, that I'm supposed to actually release heaven on earth, then I expect heaven to invade earth. Matthew 6.10. See, the reason I believe that the Lord wants to highlight expectation today is because expectation is one of the greatest measuring sticks for our beliefs. Actually, it, it helps to show us what our beliefs are grounded in, and, and what we are believing about the character of God, about the goodness of God, and really about the Word of God. Are we in the Word? Are we getting our beliefs from here or from somewhere else? Um, it's kind of like faith in action, right? So you can, we can walk around all day and be like, I'm a follower of Jesus, but if you're not actually following him in your deeds, it's like, hmm, we kind of need to ask questions, Right? And so it's the, it's the same thing, I think, with expectation. If I say I believe that God is good, but I don't expect him to be good, where's the disconnect? It's this question. And so I think that this self-examination, or I would say let's, let's examine our expectation, right? Let's kind of see where that's at. This self-examination is good because it's going to lead us to a place where we'll humble ourselves before the Lord and say, God, I don't. I don't have high expectations, and I want them. That's honest. Be honest. The expectation isn't faking some sort of like, like, well, I believe, God, I believe God's going to save every person that's alive today. If, if that's a gift of faith and you're moving, that's great. But if that's some sort of declaration that you're trying to say to make other people, this fear of man, like, well, I need them to know that I'm expectant. I need them to know that I have faith. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about falsifying or trying to create something that's not real, but I am talking about being honest before the Lord, being real with the Lord, being genuine, coming before him and saying, I want a greater level of expectation. I want to expect everything that you tell me that I can expect. And when I don't see 
what I'm expecting. I want my expectation to grow. That's what Darby just shared. Do you understand that every test that she shared a bunch of testimonies where she saw instant healing and then shared one with you where she didn't? Do you think that that is going to slow her down or speed her up? If you don't know, it's going to speed her up. Do you know why? Because she didn't see the breakthrough. And she's like, hmm, but I should have. So I'm going to press in more. Because, because the word of God says that that, that, act, that, that guy should have got healed. And the shortcoming's never with him. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to learn more. I'm going to love more. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to raise my expectations. Like next time, that guy's going to get healed when I drive by. Yeah. Next time, that guy, I'm not even going to stop and have to pray for him. I'm just going to roll down my window and blow. <laughs> and he... <laughs> Please, please only do that if you're operating in faith. <laughs> My pastor told me to... <laughs> Worship team, come on up. Stay with me for just a few more, just a couple more minutes. Expectation, listen, expectation is most critical. So important when things aren't going well. It's so important when your experience over and over and over and over seems to be unmet expectation. That's when it's the most important. King David is the best example of this in Scripture, in my opinion. He'd been anointed as king, but he's running from the king. How does that work, right? He's he's been anointed as king already, but then the king, Saul, whom he does nothing but honor his entire life and even protect He protects him from his own men. He protects him because God placed him in authority. And David knows that. So David gets anointed as king, and then Saul tries to persecute him, kill him, steal from him, everything. And David's in this wrestle of like, but God, you said, and you've read the Psalms, right? Okay, so that's a lot of David's wrestle, right? And and he's like, but Lord, Lord, I know what I hold on to. But then he sees his reality. His reality, if he let his reality dictate his expectations the old testament would probably read a lot differently than it does okay but he didn't he let the word of the lord dictate his expectations in psalm 27 he goes through all these terrible things and he ends with this i am still confident of this another way of saying that i still expect the following that i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living and you know what he did he did because expectation paints a bullseye for heaven and david saw the goodness of the lord in the land of the living his confident expectation it wasn't based on his experience thank god based on what he was seeing the lord do and had heard the lord say to him it was based on a promise from the father this is a couple action steps if you want to write these down you can there's a lot more to say on this but we'll stop right here for now I want you guys to evaluate your expectations, okay? That's number one. Evaluate your expectations. Do I wake up in the morning like, well, whatever bad's going to happen is going to happen today to me? Or like, hey, when it rains, it pours. is Is it this sort of like glass half empty, pessimistic, woe is me, fear of man, fear of the day, you know, those kind of like, are we coming to church like, preacher better not go over noon, man? Or is it, is it just, I mean, is it kind of like, uh, or is it high expect like God, you said? You wake up in the morning, you're like, morning, Holy Spirit. What are you going to surprise me with today? Who are we going to meet? What good things are you like? How are you going to bless me? How can I bless you? Is it that kind of attitude? Number two, Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing. Faith, expectancy, believing, these are all very closely related. So Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Notice that it doesn't say faith comes from having heard. It's a constant filling up it's a constant hearing and i would just encourage you guys just as you heard testimonies from darby this morning fill your mind with testimonies if you don't have any of your own yet go get someone else's and use theirs because it's just as valid am i right that 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 the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy when i'm in a what i a testimony dry spell right where i'm it's pretty usually my fault i just i go on youtube and i'll just for an hour i'll just watch other people's testimonies i'll be like Okay, God's good again, right? You know, like, because I need, I need that. 
but, but fill yourself up. And this says hearing by the word of God. Get in the word of God. That song is not going to change. Get in the word of God. Meditate on it day and night. See what it says and root yourself in that. Number three is uh, base your expectations on the word of God and his character. On what he says you can expect. Regardless of your experience. Base your expectations on what he says. And number four, never expect anything less than what God says to expect. This is a challenge, you guys. This is a challenge because it's so easy and it's so tempting. And God, I know I do it all the time. I did it with my kids this week. I did it with my kids. The kids are just disobeying me and disobeying me and disobeying me. And they did it again, and I said out loud, I was like, I told Kaylee, I was like, that's okay, I actually didn't expect them to obey me that time. Like, because I didn't. And then I stopped, and I'm preparing for my sermon in the other room. I'm just telling you the truth. And I sat down, I was like, no, I'm going to call them higher. I'm not going to, I can't, I can't lower my expectations even in small things which parenting is not a small thing. But I can't lower my expectations. I got to raise them. So I got to set them and root them in the things that God says to set them and root them in. You guys can be confident, I promise you, you can be confident that when you expect what God tells you to expect, you will be blessed, you will be fulfilled, and you will see your expectation met. You will. It's just the way that it is. Some, it, yeah, well, I won't go into that. But I, would you guys stand with me as we close? Guys, this applies to so many different areas. I told you we were going to center in on a few things, but this applies to healing. Darby told you it's okay that the person you're praying for doesn't expect, they don't even have to believe in Jesus. They can still get healed. Usually that's power evangelism you hit them with the power and then they get saved not you hit them with salvation and then they you, you know what I mean both work but as long as I'm expectant I don't care if you have faith or as long as you have faith don't worry if I don't let that expectancy paint this massive bullseye on you worry about you father I pray this morning right now God that the spirit of, of expectancy father over each one of us, God, that we would expect nothing short of what you've promised, nothing short of what you've you implored us and taught us and demonstrated for us to expect. Father, I expect that anywhere that you are, I can encounter you. And I expect those encounters every time for me to leave changed, and I don't want to change back. I think it's impossible to encounter you, Jesus, and to not be changed. So I pray, Lord, that even as we come and gather on Sunday mornings, that there would be a heart of expectancy. I'm excited to be in the God's house this morning. I'm excited to be with brothers and sisters because I'm going to get healed today. I'm going to learn today. I'm going to get rebuked today. Rebuke's good. We grow when we get rebuked and loved the right way. We get excited. Father, I pray for expectancy, Lord, over people that have been dealing with sickness and disease for a short term or long term. Let new expectancy arise that that's broken off in the name of Jesus. Because you took up our transgressions, Lord. Isaiah 53, you were bruised for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities punishment was on you, Lord. By your stripes, we are healed. Father, I pray, Lord, that our, that our level of expectation would not be rooted any longer in our lack of experience or in our experience, but that it would be rooted in you every time, every time we go back to the original bar. We don't build on the good or build on the bad. We stay with the steady. You are the steady, Jesus, unchanging, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, that I would always go back to the original measuring stick and say, well, what does God say? What does the word of God say? That's going to be how I approach my expectation. And Lord, I pray, God, for an outbreaking of miracles in the name of Jesus. 
even today, there's just two things on my heart is to do this as we close. I don't want to embarrass anybody, so y'all just stay with your heart. But I want to pray over Keith Nichols right now. You guys can just, if a couple, Glenn, if a couple of you all want to go back there, lay hands on him. I want to pray over Joseph Schultz. He's in the back doing the tech. And I'm just going to, some of you, if some of you don't know what's going on, I'm not going to explain it. It really doesn't, that doesn't matter as much as what God says matters. And what matters is that what's happening in their bodies is injustice. Say it. Say injustice. You have to believe that it's injustice in order for you to expect for justice to come. Lord, we release justice in my brothers and Joseph and Keith in the name of Jesus. I bind the sickness in the name of Jesus. Leave their bodies today in the name of Jesus. You can just pray out loud. Just pray like the Koreans. Come on. Declare. Pray from heaven towards earth, not the other way around. Partner with what the Lord has already said. Partner with what Jesus has already said. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes and amen to health, healing, abundance, Lord, over my brothers. No more. No more. Father, I pray, God, today, let expectation rise in each of us that it carries far beyond these walls, God to our neighbors, to our co-workers, and to people we see walking down the streets. God, that you would move on our hearts to stop and love. You always stop for the one. Father, would you move on our hearts to get out of our comfort zone. You break off comfort. It's not a calling into the comfort life. It's not comfortanity. It's Christianity. You said, take up your cross daily. This is hard, but it's so good. Father, I pray, Lord, no longer would we be okay with just going out to lunch and tipping our waitress horribly and being rude and gossiping. And no longer, Lord, we would change the culture of Christianity and go back to what you established it to be, Father. That we would love, 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 love. That we would not stand for injustice in the body of Christ any longer. In the name of Jesus.